Hello, and welcome to the Doctors Who Read Stuff. Thank you for joining us as we continue our deep dive into the discussion of Dune by Frank Herbert. The Harkonnen trap is now set in motion. Paul and Jessica have been kidnapped and are flown into the deep desert. UA and Duke Leto are brought before Piter and the Baron. Hopefully the Duke remembers the tooth. Okay, this is the Doctors Who Read Stuff. My name is Chris. And I'm Chip. And I'm Brian. And uh, as Chip said, um, we, we've really kind of reached the turning point of this novel. Uh, it was This is basically the fulcrum that they have teased since the very first chapter or section. Yeah, all this, kind of all the stuff that Herbert said was going to happen is starting to happen. Yeah, and... It's like the Sander Lanch, except it's like in the first third of the book. <laughs> Is it really the first third? It seems like it should be more than that. Uh, maybe it's yeah. more than a third, but it's it like, we're not yeah. half we're not halfway into it. I know that. No, um, but last time uh, when Yui poisoned the Duke, he said that he could get Paul and Jessica to safety, and that's kind of where we're picking up here. Um, and it's. This is one of those where, like, I was confused if the guards in the Thopter with them were, like, the ones that Yui had sent to get them to safety, or if they were true Harkonnens. It seemed like they were maybe true Harkonnens because they were jerks, but I was I was half expecting to have, like, a sympathizer, if that makes sense. Yeah, they really, they really weren't friendly at all to either Paul or Jessica. They were kind of arguing about, well, Jessica for one. I mean, I, I don't know. And maybe they could have betrayed Yui. I mean, Yui certainly was uh, was shifty enough, where I'm sure some of the people he dealt with were also kind of shifty too. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think that they were true Harkonnens. I mean, they were, I mean, they were planning to do nasty stuff to Jessica and kill Paul and you know, all that kind of stuff. But then I think it was, this is kind of where, and I, I know we'll get into this, if not this discussion, it'll be the next discussion is, you know, Paul's really kind of going through a lot of changes right now. So he's hyper aware of things. So he notices that there's like a package under the seat and he notices like all these little things are there to really help them escape, but they just need the opportunity to escape. So I think that UA maybe didn't, you know, have a sympathizer with him to help them out, but maybe he gave them all the tools to help themselves out. Sure. In a way. That makes sense. Yeah. I could see that too. Um, and it's, <laughs> it's interesting that the idea of safety is getting them into the desert, right? Because ever since they got there, <laughs> it's been yep. like, the desert is bad. It will kill you. Um, but, mm -hmm. um, I guess there's there's nowhere else to go. You really can't. We can't stay in the right. castle or in the right. In the Harkonnens are everywhere. And... in on the plot, yeah, the only so place you can't where not... get back on board a guild freighter or anything like that. So, yeah, right. right. Yeah, I mean, getting off planet's not easy. So it's really escaping into the desert where right. Or really, I mean, to be honest, the Harkonnens aren't going to follow them too far into the no. desert. They're going to no, presume right. that they're dead. And... Yeah. Leave them for the worm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the next the next section kind of deals with, from Yui's point of view, and it appears to chronologically kind of be happening before the section with Paul and Jessica on the Thopter. You know, because he's just subdued the Duke and all of that. Oh, yeah. And the very tail end of that, they 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 show him going to the Thopter to put the package under the seat. So I kind of like what Herbert did where he kind of has that. He has this from Paul and Jessica's standpoint, this uncertainty, and you don't really know what really happened. And then he fills in the blank later so I, I i think it helps to kind of add to some of the dramatic yeah. tension in the previous section it's just interesting to have those two sequences I, out of order 
I would agree. At first, I was thrown off by that. It's like, you know, what's going on? And then yeah, you get that feeling like, like it was revealed later. But that's one of the few reveals that he really kind of leads the, the reader on with. I mean, we talked about this uh, earlier in the series that we know from the very first two or three uh, scenes that this is what everything is building up towards. So everything else has just been all the dominoes getting put into place, everything falling, mm -hmm. the trap being set, and then now springing. But this was one of the very few surprises on, on my part where it's like I, I didn't really see that coming. So I did like that part. Yeah. And it was also interesting to me um, how, you know, like the Harkonnen agents and the Sardaukar are all calling Yui, just like, they just call him traitor. Um, and he's, 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 this is from the book. He lowered his gaze, pressed past the Sardaukar, knowing this as a foretaste of how history would remember him. It's kind of like, it, it just had, it's that, it's that knowing he's like, I've, I've done this and this is how this is the legacy I'm going to leave behind. This is what everyone's going to remember. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I just found that interesting. I think did, did we jump over the scene when um, Jessica and Paul are brought before the Baron before they're actually taken out I into the so, desert? Yeah. yeah. Where he gives. Did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I always like that scene. I always like that scene where he gives Piter the choice of either having the Lady Jessica, which is what he really wants, or basically right. controlling Arrakis, isn't it? They're giving him the duchy yeah. on Arrakis, and and Piter ultimately chooses Arrakis, which you know what? If, what if he had chosen Jessica? You know how would things have turned out differently? Had you know, Piter not made that decision, you know, it, it, it still I don't felt... think Yui could have protected him at that point or protected them at that point or given them the tools to escape at that point. Sure. But... I will say though, part of that feels like, uh, you know, like the, he didn't really have a choice. I felt like that's sort of the, the same tone of voice I take with my kids right before they eat, you know, a food, like a supper they don't want. It's like, well, you can either have yeah. this or you can have, nothing you know right. it's yeah. like you really have no choice here but it, it, it he gave him the option he just really steered him strongly towards the one and i guess i'm not it's been quite a few years since i've read it so i always thought that his intent was to give dune to raban the beast and have him basically just grind it into you know you know basically just run this dictatorship over it and run him into the ground and you know i don't know i i guess i always thought that was raban's gift was that he was going to get so, Dune or get the planet and not piter so, at the but that could play into it because of what happens to piter here in a few well that's just <laughs> it i think at, at the tail Same. end of this section after you know things go down and piter is no more um he's like well shoot there go <laughs> my plans to use Piter to get Arrakis ready for fade. Now I'm going to have to bring Raban in mm -hmm. and take his, take his leash off. So yeah, I think his first. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was. Yeah. I mean, it was the whole plan was basically to, you know, grind Dune into, you know, submission and then let fade come in as this savior who everybody loves in a few years yeah. or whatever. But his fate is his favorite. Yeah, um, but let's let's talk about the events that kind of lead up to the demise of the Baron's beloved Mentat. Um, so we get a point of view. The POV is from the Duke while he's still under the effect of the drugs, and he can't really. He can't see. He can't really remember anything. Like he's, he's kind of in this drug-induced fog, um, and so it's just an interesting. 
Uh, my brain just stopped working, guys. <laughs> well, it, I I thought it was kind of funny how you know the the Duke is before the Baron, and the Baron's like, "All right, we're gonna wait out this this fatigue. I, I want to talk to him, and while I'm waiting, let me have a meal because my my uh, suspenders suspenders." What is yeah. Suspensers, you know, he was talking of or the uh, Herbert makes mention about these suspensers actually, um, almost like straining under the weight. Yeah, but yeah, he had to make sure to get that one meal in before he could talk. I mean, what a it's guy! It's important to eat. Um, but he's he's kind of like pondering before this point about he's like okay. Piter has almost outlived his usefulness. I'm going to have to probably 86 him after after he serves my purposes and I don't need him anymore mm -hmm. because he's going to become mm -hmm. a problem. Um, but uh, before the Duke is brought in, though, Yui actually speaks to the Baron. Uh, and he, he said that the Baron had promised to deliver his Juana from her agony. Um, and I, and I don't think he's, I don't think he is operating under the assumption that she's still alive. I think he knows that she's already dead and that he's going to follow soon after. Mm -hmm. I don't think he had any illusions that he was going to survive this. Um, but, uh, mm -hmm. So Piter, Piter's pain amplifiers were what they were using on her, and that's how they managed to break the Imperial conditioning because he couldn't stand the thought mm -hmm. of her being subjected to that. So even even her yeah. dying was better than her being in that position to him, I think, is how I took this. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I took away from it as well. But yeah, he's definitely going in there with, I mean, he has no hope that he's going to make it out. And it's actually a pretty quick exit for Yui thereafter. And I was a little conflicted if I was sad about it or not. I mean, he, he certainly was justified in some of his actions, but I don't know. He, he's very much a great character. Like I could see why he did what he did, but he's still right. not exactly a great yeah. guy either. Yeah, and I mean, he kind of, within the narrative, he served his purpose. There's really no more need for him to be around. So, right. you know, in a sense, it's probably cleaner right. that, you know, sure. Piter knifes him in the back and he joins Juana in death and then the Baron and Piter. I think the Baron and Piter then have a talk about sending Paul and Jessica to the desert and that the Thopter's missing and, you know, they, there isn't, definitive signs or definitive proof that they I think were killed. The, so you know, I think the like Duke the... is in there at that point because that's one of the things in his they, okay, drug, did they bring drug him in? state is that, that he mm -hmm. latches onto. He's like, they're safe. They aren't found. Yep. And that's like that's like yeah. one of the anchors. So that's, the Barons is something about we don't deal in probabilities yeah. or possibilities or something. Mm -hmm. But so the possibility from Ludo's perspective is that yeah they have and a then, chance and so. he he does finally remember the tooth before we flash forward to the mm. to the meal because uh, then he he finds himself in the chair and that's like, right he he's he's still chained yeah. but he he can see he can see the bear and he's his mind isn't clouded anymore so yeah he's a yeah. More lucid at this point but he's. What I find interesting is, well, I don't know if I find it interesting, but it's like the Baron is like trying to get information out of him. And it's like, what, what, what's his incentive? I mean, like, right. What's his incentive to say anything? Yeah, other than he wants, he, I mean, isn't he talking about having Peter yeah. torture yeah. him basically to get him to talk? But but what does he? What information does he really need out of him? At this right. Point? I mean, he's asking. I mean, about where Paul and Jessica are, and he has no idea for one thing. 
And he wouldn't right. betray them if he right. did. I mean, he knows as much as right. the Baron at this point as to where they're yeah. at. So, dude, I've been knocked out for the last twenty-four yeah. hours. Leave yeah. me alone. Yeah. And so he's he does have full memory of Yui telling him about the tooth. I mean, he remembered the tooth in his drug induced state, but he couldn't remember who told mm-hmm. him. Like he's like, somebody told me about the tooth, but I don't remember who. But but now he's kind of got that, and he's like waiting for his moment. And it's like he he almost to me he almost does it out of desperation. He's like, I might not get a better shot. This might be my only chance to do it. Mm-hmm. Um. And he takes out, what does he take out? He takes out Piter and, like, the Harkonnen captain of the guard or something like that. Yeah, like the yeah. Uman, Uman Kudu. Was that yeah. It? yeah. And, and Hark, the Baron. The guard captain. Yep. Manages to, like, back up and barely escape. But yeah. I'm not going to lie. I was happy to see Piter go. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, no love lost. He's not a nice dude. Um, no. 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 He's an interest. He's a good villain yeah. but, but you can't have too many villains i mean you've already got the baron you've already got you know we haven't met raban yet yeah but, you know there's there's other villains we're gonna meet along the way here so kind of like kind of like ua though i mean piter kind of served his purpose right mm-hmm. oh yeah um it, it and it's the section after this where you know the baron gets out into the hallway that i've i kind of found something some interesting things um, because the, I don't know if it's like the captain of the Sardaukar, but one of the higher ranking Sardaukar comes to talk to him and uh, the Baron makes the observation that they all look like relatives of the late Duke and they have very bad manners toward the Baron. So he's got some apprehension, even though the Sardaukar are working with Mm -hmm. his house He's yeah. he's still a little scared of them, uh, and you know, is is it justified or is it paranoia? We don't really know, but like the Sardaukar isn't saluting. Um, it, there's he can read the disdain. I mean, and then then he says something that's very interesting to me, that the emperor ordered his cousin to be killed without agony. So Leto and the emperor mm-hmm. were cousins. Yeah, and I thought that they even mentioned that earlier, that I thought the Baron referred to him as cousin at one point. No, not the Baron. Duke Leto and the Emperor. That was that was the uh, relationship mm-hmm. I was unsure of. Okay. There was a relationship, but I can't remember if it was between the Duke and the Emperor or if it was between the Baron and the Emperor. Shoot, I might need to go back and reread. Yeah, I need to look at it again. But I did think the uh, again we know that the the emperor has been yeah. kind of okay. I found it. Oh. Um, nice. My emperor has charged me. This is the Colonel Bashar of the Sardaukar. My emperor has charged me to make certain his royal cousin dies cleanly without agony. Okay. Uh, so that tells me that the Duke and the Emperor were cousins. But hmm. maybe not. Maybe if somebody who's watching this... For some reason, I think it is. Yeah. But... Maybe somebody can set us straight in the comments. But... Um, but... It's... This is kind of interesting because what Herbert is doing is he's like there is like this clean plan for this plot to go through but there are all these like sub threads and subtext so like with the duke having the tooth and causing this Mm -hmm. accident and then the sardaukar showing up and demanding to see the body to make certain that the baron's telling the truth the sardaukar is then going to see that duke leto almost killed the Baron, and that's going to be seen as weakness and failure by the Sardaukar, which will then be reported to the Emperor, which the Emperor will then think that the Baron is weak and almost fail. I mean, there's there are all these political subtexts that are just, like, driving kind of the undercurrent of this entire story, which is... It, it's... 
really well put together. And one other little tidbit that I caught in there too, you know, behind even all of the political subtext was uh, a little throwaway comment where the Duke and the Baron both referred to Duke Leto as the Red Duke. I don't know if either of you remember reading yeah. that. Yeah, and he said that only the Emperor would call them the Red Duke, wasn't it? And so, I, you know, we talk about, like, the Orange Catholic Bible. We talk about, um, you know, even in the next section, we have some... Uh, not premonition, but we have some foreshadowing of some some uh, religious undertones. But here, this was one where I came across that and realized, uh, like, typically when someone is martyred, they're usually known as a red martyr if they're killed uh, either by torture or violent death due to persecution. Oh. I thought it was interesting, and I wondered... Interesting. This was like a necessary step. So uh, by calling him the Red Duke, I would assume that the Emperor was doing this for a specific purpose and specifically trying to weed out his, his cousin. That makes sense. And given the fact that Herbert has been pulling things like that, you know, like you said, Orange Catholic Bible, um, even the name Benny Gesserit, mm -hmm. you made an interesting comparison to yeah so that wouldn't surprise me in the least so yeah that yeah um the, the bear so i i found the section i found the line i was kind of confused to buy i guess um it's when the duke and piter and the baron are all in the same room and they're talking or the baron's talking about all the different things that piter's gonna do like hot tallow on the back or on the eyelids blah 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 but then the Baron says, believe me, share cousin, I do not want it to come to this. Is he talking to the Duke? Because he referred to somebody as cousin, but I wasn't sure mm -hmm. if it was mm -hmm. the Duke or sure. if it was someone else. No, I do remember reading that now that you say that. and Yeah. So that's where I was confused Man, on the whole cousin. and That's a very dysfunctional family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and wait till we wait till the next big reveal coming up in the next right. episode. Right. <laughs> spoilers Which coming. Is, I didn't say I didn't give the spoiler Which away. Which is but... probably a great segue. Uh, before we before mm -hmm. we terminate yeah. this though, the one of the last things the Baron thinks before we end this section is that he needed to contact. And I might say this wrong. Playlax uh, for his new Mentat. He said they must they oh, must yeah. have the new one ready for me by now. And it, it's almost like he treats Mentats as tools. They aren't people, they're tools to him. Mm -hmm. I must have the new one ready for me by now. I mean it, it's like us going and like I'm gonna go get a new car or I'm gonna go buy a bicycle. Yeah. Or, you know, that that's just the the vibe I got from that. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, and then not to make the Baron any more evil than he is, he has a young person sent to him in his sleeping chamber at the end of the chapter. Boy, that, that was creepy, too. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Man, that was... Mm -hmm. yeah. The one that looks like Paul. Right. <gasps> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that wraps up the discussion for tonight. Next time we go back to Paul and Jessica, we learn their fate we learn what they're doing then we're learning what's happening there's only one section left until the end of this book first this first part of the book mm -hmm. so that's what we're going to be covering next time if you're reading along go until you hit book two muadib i think or paul in the desert or something like that yep yeah muadib. was i right Hot. yeah you were oh, nice. it is muadib. i knew that yeah it's book two muadib so go to there um, if you enjoyed this, please click the like button. Please click the subscribe button. Uh, sound off in the comments. We would love to hear from you what you liked about this section, what you didn't like about this section. Uh, if we missed something, please let us know. Uh, we love hearing from you. We love conversing with you. So please utilize it. And we will see you next week. Allons-y.